Okay, I'm going to record a little video here for you about Adobe Draw. A lot of you had problems with that, and so I'm going to show you how you can uh, how how to use the tools a little bit more, and then and then also how to use the layers of it. I'm going to launch Adobe Draw, and it starts a new document. If I don't have a new document open, you see here's where I created a new one. I just cl clicked on the plus symbol. I chose a a um, size. I chose the iPad because that's what I have. Okay, so I am going to show you up here you have the undo button and that's a really important one to do. You can also do two fingers and swipe to the left to undo. Two fingers and swipe to the right. We'll do a redo. This button right here takes you to shapes. We'll get to that in a little bit. Right here is an important one. This one is layers. And the layers if you press on this layers button, it hides the layers. You know me, I like to show the layers. This is a share button, and just like any other app, that would be to share. It is not to save it. It's mostly just to share it with something else. Up here you have your settings, and you can show your grids or not. You can rotate your canvas. You can um, see some videos on how to do some of the things. It's just kind of cool, including gestures. What uh, gestures will work and you can also learn a little bit more about the brushes here. Um, I'm going to hide that. Um, this makes it go full screen of course. Okay so over here you have brushes. Now what I came to figure out is that you have a round brush and this you have all these different brushes here and I thought well every time you want the round brush you have to use this one. Well turns out you don't. These are the brushes you have. By default they are set to one to each one each different one. However, you can set them up so that you can go back and forth between them. So I'm going to show you a little bit about this one first. So right here, see this one set up by default as a basic round, basic taper, flat, chisel, and basic terminal. I, I don't like that. I don't know what that little thing is, but it bothers me when I'm drawing. My favorite one is the basic taper. When you click on the basic taper, and you click and hold, you're going to get some three options right here. This right here shows you the size. Okay, so this is the opacity, how strong of it is, how, how much it shows up. And remember, if it's less opacity, it will be see-through. And then this one right here, you change the color. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come out here and I'm going to change the color just to a regular color. I'm going to grab the slider and add more color to it. Okay, you can choose between the color picker, you can go to themes. These right here you'll see are community themes. These are ones that show up for everybody in the whole world. I can also go to my Wendy Golsky library and you can see here are my themes. You can't see what the name of them is, but you can see these are the colors that I chose before. And I have themes in here that some of you guys even created that, that are showing up. So I'm going to go back here to the picker and I'm going to click on my sizing tool. If I make the sizing small, I can make a small stroke. If I make the sizing bigger, it gets bigger. And if I go even larger, I get larger. Okay, I'm going to click on the undo button three times. Now I will tell you, I am left-handed, and so when I do this, I have to reach across the screen, and it covers up some of the things here. I believe in preferences. You can set that up to make it right-handed, or to make it left-handed, but if I'm teaching you guys how to do it, it'll be backwards for you, and I might as well just learn how to do it this way. So just be aware that when I reach across, you can't see something. It's because I'm left-handed. I'll try to tuck in so that you can see it. Okay, now, when I go to draw my shape, I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. If you draw it really fast, it will be fairly thin. But if you draw it slow, oops, it's not taking. You notice the, slow I draw, the slower I draw it, the thicker it gets. So speed on how you do this makes a big difference. And you notice that there's little, if I just click, I just get a little dot. So if you need that, that's how you can get a dot. All right. So, the other thing I want to show you is about opacity. If I take this down, there is about 10% opacity. 
when I go to draw the line, see how it's a little bit see-through? And if I cross it again and cross it again, you see it eventually starts getting stronger and stronger and stronger of a color. And in theory, if I did it 10 times, it would be 100% opacity. I don't think it really works that way, though. But be, be aware. So if you're trying to shade something in, let's undo this a whole bunch of times to get rid of some of those things so we can see. If I was trying to shade something in, you see if I go over it several times, I can get it to start kind of getting a maybe a gradient. Now it looks a little bit more stripey on the recording screen than it really does in real life. All right, raise up the opacity, make it a little bit stronger. So playing with the opacity helps. Okay, another thing that people don't notice is down here. If I click on this, I get some options. First of all, roundness. If I make this less round, do you see how this shape becomes more oval? So if I draw up and down, it looks like this, but if I draw side to side, it would look like that. Okay. I'm going to put that back up at 100%. Angle. Well, you know what? Let's put that back at 50% because if I change the angle then, you see how that gets angled to one side. And if I draw the angle, it gets back over there. So 90 degrees would be when it's, it's straight up and down. Okay, and then taper. See how that edge gets a little bit more pointy? And so adjusting that taper See that's a little bit more pointy there. It's like a long pointy where here it's a, a shorter point. Okay. Let's Let's go back a bunch of times and clear that canvas. Okay, again, pressure dynamics. My iPad does not have a pressure sensitive surface. Your phones probably don't either, but the newest iPad does. So if you have that, if you're lucky enough to have that, you would be able to use the the Apple iPad pen and stuff too. However, it does have a little bit of um, influence in that it changes size and that's what I told you before about when I dry whoops <laughs> when I draw slow it gets wider rather than when I draw faster now you saw that whole thing turn red if you click and hold and it's not going to do that now how funny well, when I clicked and held it, it dumped the whole thing, uh, paint in the whole thing. So if I have a shape like this and I click and hold, you'll see I can get it to fill in. Okay, But the shape has to be completed. If this shape is open at all, it will not do that. All right, I've been undoing and getting rid of all this thing. What I'm going to do right here is I'm going to make a new layer. So when I click on the plus symbol, I can either do a draw a layer or draw an image layer. I'm just going to make a new draw layer. And then I can come back to this one, and if you click and hold, you can get some choices. I can make this less opacity, uh, less, oh my goodness, the lower opacity. I can just turn it off and not let it show at all. And that's the same thing in Adobe Photoshop where you can change the uh, how it shows up. You also have blend modes. And just like Photoshop, we have all of these different blend modes. And you guys have played with those before. I suggest you play with them now and see what you can do with them. They can be fun. Um, transform. You can get things to move around with it. You can duplicate a layer by clicking on here. And then if you decide, you know what, I don't even like this layer, I could just delete it. So now it's gone. Click on this layer, and now I've got a fresh, clean layer to draw on. Going back to this. You also have uh, velocity dynamics, and then you can also go back here and reset the brush. And I'm going to go do that right now, just so it goes back to its normal default settings. Okay. You also have flat and chisel and basic terminal, and then of course the basic ground. 
all of those things do the same thing. So let's say I really like this red color, but here I wanted to have this one be a very thin teal color. So I can go in here and draw this. Then I can come back here and draw this one without changing brushes. So I can go back and forth between the brushes. So when you open it up and it shows those brushes that are preset, you don't have to just choose this one to choose the settings for the, you know, you don't have to choose that brush every time. You could set that kind of brush up here. Okay. You can have all of them the same thing. So be aware of that. Eraser tool. Right here, click and hold. Opens up your settings. You don't get as many choices. You can change the size of your brush by moving it up and erase if you want to. You do have some settings down here. If I click on them, you can change how round it is, just like you could do the brushes. Again, you can change the angle. And you can also change the taper, and you see a little preview of what's going to, that look going to look like. See how it goes really, really tapered, or not as much tapered. So you can decide that. Again, pressure dynamics and velocity dynamics not going to help much because I don't have the pressure sensitive iPad. All right. So now it's time to draw something. So I am going to come over to my layers palette. First thing I want to do is I want to create an image layer. And I'm going to take an image that I have. You can take a photo if you want. I'm going to choose one that is on my iPad. I believe I took some pictures of some flowers last week. And I'm going to choose that one right there. And it's going to come in now. First thing I have to do is I have to figure out where I want it to go. And I can move it all around, decide how I like it. I can fit it to view. I can create a grid if I want. I can flip it horizontally or vertically. I'm just going to keep it as it is. I'm going to come over here and click Done. Okay. You can see that is on its own layer now. I'm going to come up here to the Draw layer. And I'm going to start to draw something. So I told you before I liked the tapered brushes. I'm going to choose this one right here and I'm going to choose a basic round brush now. And when I click on it, I'm going to get some choices and I'm going to come over here. Now that's a yellow already and I don't know. I'm clicking and holding and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to use this it's the eyedropper tool. So I'm going to come over here and suck up that eye color right there. And with that, I just sucked up that color. Okay. My brush is pretty small. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So let's see. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to lower the opacity a little bit to maybe about 50%. What I found is that if you have a lower opacity, you start looking better. So I'm just going to come in here. I, oh, by the way, I'm not going to be able to see this because it's a light yellow color. So I'm going to have to lighten that image layer. I'm going to come here to this image layer and I'm going to lighten the opacity just to make it easier for me to see what my actual drawings are going to be. And then I'm going to come over here back to the draw layer. You've got to make sure you're on the correct draw layer when you start drawing. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to shape. And I'm not seeing that drawing. So I'm going to go a little stronger. Zoom in. Come up here and add that in. And then I'm going to click and hold and I'll fill that in. Now clearly it's a little bit bright. There was a little bit of shadow on there, so I'm going to take this color and I'm going to go over here and suck up a little bit of the darker color. Lighten the opacity quite a bit. And I'm going to start filling that in. Now I've got that really, really strong. It's going to be hard to blend that. I'm going to go even weaker. I'm going to go down to maybe 7% and see if I can start. And sometimes I like my stylus and sometimes I don't.
All right, the key is to making lots of layers. You can have as many as you want. I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to do the inside of this. Notice that I hid the image layer so that you could see the drawing better. Okay, I'll turn the picture back on. I think it's ready for us to start making our stems. At this point, I'm going to use both of these brushes. I'm going to click and hold here, and I'm going to suck up this kind of a whitish color for this one. I'm going to make it a little bit thinner. I'm going to come to this one. I'm going to suck up the gray color. Adjust the opacities accordingly. Okay, let's make that a little bit stronger. All right, so definitely want to make a new layer. So I'm going to click on the top layer, create a new layer up on top of that. Anytime you need to zoom in, or, or even move it for that matter, you grab it with two fingers, pull in or out, and then move it. You can't just move it, because if you do, you'll draw a line. So you need to make sure that you make it smaller and then zoom it in to where you want it to go. All right, with this new line, I'm going to go ahead and start drawing this petal. And that's a little bit bigger, but I don't mind. I'm going to make sure that that gets filled in so it touches each other. Go here. And again, I'm going to make sure that gets filled in. I'll show you in a second how I'm going to come around that. Whoop. Two fingers zoom out. I can start it up again by just grabbing that. All right, so I want those filled in. I'm going to click and hold, click and hold, click and hold. That one must not be zoomed in. So see right there where it's not connected? I've got to make sure that that gets connected. Then it'll fill in. So if something doesn't fill in, that's why. Okay. I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm going to draw the other petals on here. So I'm going to pretend that this one is showing. So I'm going to go ahead and go 
here. Make sure it's closed in. Here. Must not be closed in. It's hard to tell. Oops. All right, now these petals are on top, so I need to make sure that I take this layer and move it above and above and above because as I'm looking at it, see how much better it looks? Now let's go find that layer. Right now I'm going to, let's see, let's take this one. I'm going to hide it. Select that one, and now I'll start working on it. Okay, so I started drawing the feathers, petals rather, not feathers, and I, you see I tried to make a little separation. Now I'm going to add a little bit more color to them. So I'm going to go back to this brush right here. This is the one where I had yellow, and I'm going to go a little bit brighter yellow, but I'm going to go much less opacity and I'm going to make it a little bit big, bigger and really really light opacity. I just barely want to have anything showing here. So I'm going to go back here. Um, I'm going to start painting in a little bit of that yellow right here at the bottom. And here. And it doesn't even matter that I'm coloring in this area because this layer's on top and it won't show. So I can be a little bit more sloppy. And I'm going to come down to this layer and do the same thing. And because they're, the opacity is changed, the colors start interacting with each other differently. All right, now I'm going to hide this layer, my original drawing, so you can see what I've got going on here. And you can see that having the interactive layers now, I can't see the background. Okay, it's hard to see on the video, so let's go and make a new layer. And I'll make a new draw layer. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to try to get the biggest brush I can. And one thing I find with Adobe Draw is that you can't quite get a brush big enough, and I haven't figured out how to come around that right now. I am going to uh, lower my opacity. I have a little bit more luck with that. And I'm just going to... Just going to str scribble and draw a little bit. Now, one thing I found 
If you go outside of your drawing area, when you close that image, it makes your picture smaller. So to avoid that, I make sure I go in and erase stuff that is outside my canvas area. There is probably a better way to do this, but I haven't figured that out yet. So if you do cut color outside of your canvas area, I would suggest you do that because otherwise your drawing end up, ends up really, really small. So the point I wanted to make was when you have your drawing and you can see that I made this layer underneath that shows it makes your drawing pop a little bit and you can see how adding those layers and having different opacities, you can imagine how I could start really building this up. And again, if you decide, well, I don't want the purple showing right now, hide it. Turn back on. Oh, I hit stop already. Turn back on the layers that you do want so you can see and draw the rest. And maybe I want to draw the stems now and I want to start adding those other petals. Maybe I want to add some more shading into the, the flower. But that's the point there. So the last thing you need to know is how to save this. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn off this layer and I'm going to turn back on this layer. You want to turn on the layers that you want to see. If I want to save this drawing as a workable drawing, I simply am going to click close. It ends up in my draw projects and I can come back to that later. Now you see how, see how this canvas has gotten bigger? I must have left a little dot somewhere outside of this canvas area. That's what happened to my ugly face drawing that I did for myself earlier. So if I want to open this back up later, here it is ready to go with all its layers ready to save. If you are ready to save this image, you can click here and if you come here, you can actually send it to your Adobe programs. You can save it as an image. You can link it to a project so you guys could actually link to each other. Behance is their um, sharing app that you can share with your things online. I could save this as a Photoshop document so that I can open it up in Photoshop and work on it again. You even have a time lapse feature where I can actually go back and see how I drew this. And you can save it as a PDF. And you can even copy it so you can paste it into something else. So really, you could copy this and paste it into your Google Docs. And I haven't tried that, but go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go right here and choose Image. When I do, I get a choice of where to save it. And I'm going to go ahead and click Save Image. And now it will be in my Photos app when I go to find it later.